In the past couple of days, we've received a ton of different matchup requests featuring some of the most intense and one-sided battles like this guy. I mean, what a hell. But anyway, we'll see how far we can go. At the very end of this video, we'll be covering some of the most controversial matchups in the Skibidi fandom. Since I invited a few guests, yeah, things are gonna get wild. Uh, honestly, the Clock Titan easily destroys the Tri-Titan. No contest. Oh, great. Unique camera, why are you always like this? The matchups haven't even started yet. Chill out. I believe telling them the hard truth is what's best. All right, guys, calm down now. We're gonna get to that one soon. No, just let him cook. He thinks the time manipulation actually stands a chance. We all know the clock titan gets stepped on, and that's that. Okay, hold your horses now. Let's just get to the video. So, the first matchup we're gonna be covering would be, hmm, TV Titan Verlance versus Dom Studios TV. Damn, this is a one-sided matchup. Guys, what do you think about this? Yeah, true. The Skibidi Wars TV is on a completely different level. He easily stomps Dom's TV. I mean, this guy was able to perform the exact same energy feats as the OG TV and even managed to fight against the Cosmic Tri-Titan and actually gave him a run for his money. Okay, that's not how it played out, but still, he's quite formidable, and we're yet to see his battle armor, which would completely make him a bigger threat. So yeah, I think he's better. Nah. Dom Studio easily outclasses the one from Verlance as he has far better technology. He could create black holes with his blasters and also has better endurance. To be honest, I don't know why this is even a debate. I know at base Verlance might have the advantage, but using Rage Mode, Dom's TV is the strongest among all of them, as all his basic stats increase beyond anything they've ever done. If you ask me, I'd say Dom's TV Titan is a lot stronger. He's shown a lot of feats and has a Rage Mode, which we all know is no joke at all. Take a look at what he did to the scientist. That's just crazy. But Verlin's TV has the most potential and can achieve greater heights of power. But for now, Dom's TV wins. Fine then, but for the title of who's the strongest TV titan in every verse, that would completely go to Verlin's. So let's be real. Not really. I wouldn't put it like that, but let's just say he's among the top three. Like I said, this shouldn't be a debate. Dom's TV is the strongest. But speaking of the strongest, I've got another one. Who's stronger between the Drill Titan and the Sonar Titan? The Drill Titan. I mean, don't even get me started. This guy was able to completely destroy a mutant by splitting it into two. You can go and ask Zero Two how that felt. Or when he transforms to his true form, then it's over for the Sonar Titan. We saw how durable the Zero One was, but with his dragon form, he was able to literally punch him through walls. The Drill Titan would literally Jojo punch the Sonar Titan and it'd be over. Okay, since the Sonar Titan completely relies on his insane physical strength and hard punches, things wouldn't go so well for him this time. I think fully transformed Steve has more mobility and even crazier punches than him. Well, it's really close, but I've got to agree with you on this one. All right, I'm glad we didn't get to fight on this one. But how about the counter versus Steve? I mean, Steve is arguably among the top three strongest in the multiverse with his recent transformation and showings, seeing what he did to Male Zero One. But I think the counter is a lot deadlier and has better feats. Do I even need to explain his overpowered ability, which allows him to copy any scene weapon? Like, that got him through various situations. Hmm. This might be really tough to rule, but judging based on feats and potential, I think the counter wins. Yes, totally. The Drill Titan doesn't stand a chance. As the Counter Titan could adapt to his attacks even in his true form, there's only so much he could do. Okay, honestly, the Counter might not be able to defeat the Drill, but the Drill wouldn't either. And when it comes to durability, the Counter might just be one step ahead. So yeah, the Counter Titan has the advantage on this one. Uh, as much as I really hate to be that guy, I've got to tell you all the truth. The Drill Titan comes out on top. Like, take a look at his durability even before his transformation. It's completely ridiculous. What exactly is the counter's balls gonna do to him? And who knows, after his true form, his durability stats could get even higher. Looking at the structure of the counter Titan, I don't see him surviving multiple of these punches. Steve has more advantage in this fight, and that would only secure him the victory. Hmm. Unique TV, did you hit your head or something? Counter's big balls solo the verse, or rather the Drill Titan. It is close, but the Counter Titan comes out on top. Definitely. Counter just wins this. We should all accept it. Anyways, what do y'all think about this matchup? Is the future Clockman actually taking it? I know the Toilet Necromancer is a broken character that has the power to possess any of his opponents. Being a Necromancer, he has access to souls, and with this, he's considered immortal. Well, 
kinda. However, one of the most deadly things about him is his endless army and ability to raise the dead by soul manipulation and turn them into his army. He has characters like G-Man there, so you know they are no joke considering his plot armor. However, in a battle against the future Clockman, I think it's a very close one. But our clock takes this one due to some obvious reasons. The future Clockman is a very broken character in the Skibidi multiverse, having various insane feats like clearing a full episode of Mutants, which was no joke at all. Not only that, he was able to match up with the commander in battle, moving at tremendous speeds and his plot armor is just off the charts. Even when he was killed, he was able to revive himself with his past self, or rather, let's just say his soul, you pick one. But with all these, even if the necromancer summons his undead mutants, he would clear them instantly. Although there's no way he could actually kill the necromancer, as we saw in the series, he has a time spider. This spider could be a very useful instrument that can potentially give him an edge in the battle, which is its web. The Time Spider can trap the Necromancer just like we saw with the Commander, which I don't think he would be able to escape. So with this, I think future Clockman solos. Or if it gets too hard, he goes to the past and boom, the baby Necromancer is dead, and thus the Necromancer doesn't exist anymore. That simple? Yeah. Hmm, that's really up for debate. I know the Necromancer is insanely broken and has crazy feats. Yeah, the future Clockman is also crazy as well, seeing what he did to the Commander. But I'll just have to go with what my audience thinks. The future Clockman takes it. Oh, and yeah, this one is a piece of cake, right? Huh? Really? Nah, I'd win. I mean, you don't have as much riz as I do. Unique camera, give me a break. But I think he meant the characters we created. And you know that's not up for debate, right? Mine's better, no contest. Seriously? I really don't have to say it, but my character literally has plot armor, so you can't do shit to me. Let's not even talk about Unique, because he's stomping you. No difficulty. You all just had to forget about mine. I created one too, you know? And he's quite formidable. We're talking about time abilities here, so cope. Yeah, I agree. And that's why I'll be covering that one in the next podcast. We should probably consider adding one more matchup, like for Dafuk Boom's character. It's not fair. Oh, that's true. I even found one, but that's not even up for debate, okay? Dafuk Boom's TV wins. Okay, that was fast. And now for the moment we've all been waiting for. Who would win between the Time God of the Multiverse and the Gravity King? Like I said, the Tri-Titan casually steps on the clock. I mean, he's about 250 meters tall and has one of the most ridiculous durability feats we've seen, not to mention his incredible travel speed. Where's the Clock Titan gonna fit in all this? Even if he stops time, his Time Sword wouldn't be able to cause any significant damage, and it even has a limit of three times daily. So, yeah, all the Tri-Titan needs is a single moment, and he ends the Time God in a flash. Stopping him three times is too much, because he only needs one. The Counter Titan Bully would repeat itself, but this time, it's gonna be the Tri Titan who gets to taste the sword. Okay, seriously, as seen from Clock Woman and the Clock Titan himself, he could buff his entire stats and would easily be a match for the Tri Titan, if not outclassing him entirely. The Tri Titan is fast, duh, but his movement speed isn't impressive at all, and that's all Titan Clock needs. His durability might pose a problem, but it's a high diff win for the Clock Titan. In my opinion, I'd have to go with my Daddy Clock. Certainly, because when it comes to speed, as we saw in the recent episode, the Clock Titan was able to amp his speed to tremendous levels. Although the debate of gravity versus time is very popular, I still think it depends on the user's ability and control. We all know that my Daddy Clock solos in time control. If he was able to stop three Titans in time, I see no reason he can't stop the Tri-Titan. Although it would take a lot of energy, my daddy can cope with it easily. With this, he'll be able to do something to the Tri-Titan. I mean, it's not that he can't take any damage at all. It's a very close matchup, but I'll lean more toward my daddy because he has more win conditions. And just imagine if he uses his rage mode, hmm, you know it's over. All right then, unless the Clock Titan gets a new buff, he doesn't stand a chance against the Gravity King. Overall, I think the thing you should pick out from this video is that Verlin's characters aren't Goku, and with the right strategy and power boosts, other titans from other fandoms can take them out. And that also goes for you, Unique TV. Check out this video to see us rank the strongest weapons in the Skibidi fandom.